Now, you know, the atheists came out and said, the atheists have to vote against Christian nationalism as if their lives depended on it. And you know that the edgy Reddit tier atheists who have become unwitting uh, Satan worshippers are putting up idols all over state capitals. Notice me, senpai, notice me. Anyway, Professor Jacob has found some atheist Reddit tier videos to uh, get our get our brains firing. You said in a speech famously that I think a case can be made that faith is one of the world's great evils comparable to the smallpox virus, virus but harder to eradicate. I do think that, yes. Uh, because um, what I'm talking about there is faith, where faith means belief in something without evidence. Because if you believe something without evidence, then that justifies anything. You, you're no longer vulnerable to somebody coming back at you and saying, hang on a minute, let me argue the case. If you believe it without evidence, which is what faith is, then you don't argue the case. You say, no, I'm not arguing that case. This is my faith. It's mine. It's private. I don't, dis I don't dissent from it. I don't retreat from it. You're just going to have to accept it. Now, that is evil. Uh, well, well uh, yes, I said that pork chops. Pork chops are the slimiest, most hard-shelled things in the world. Uh, by which, I, I, I mean, by pork chops, I mean lobster tails, yes. If, uh, when I say pork chops, I mean lobster tails. And that is why my argument that they're slimy and hard-shelled is so persuasive. It's true if you start with a false premise, then you can, ironically, it's kind of the, the point that he thinks he's making, but he's de actually demonstrating his point, if you start with a false premise, yeah, you can end up just about anywhere. But he has a false premise. The premise that faith is believing something without evidence. That's not what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. That's true. For, let's take it even further. Theology is faith-seeking understanding. I understand. And what it means is it begins actually from logic, and then it encounters evidence in revelation, and then it applies the rigors of reason and logic to both. That's what it is. So for instance, the existence of God can be known with certainty from the natural light of human reason, by the natural light of human reason, from the created world. We can, we can know for a fact that God exists because if objects are in motion, there must be an unmoved mover at the, at the end of the line that started all the motion. Because if causes have effects, then there must be, at the end of the line, I suppose you'd say at the beginning of the line of all that, an uncaused cause. If there is such a thing as perfection in the world, then there must be a highest good, whom we call God. I am God. Oh my God, he's God. That doesn't say that the Christian religion can be understood by the light of natural human reason from the created world. There's, there's a role of revelation here as well, but that's not without evidence. You know, the, the existence of Jesus Christ is, is one of the best evidenced things in all of human history. The spread of Christianity is a pretty good evidence of the truth of Christianity. The fact that there were 500 eyewitnesses to the resurrection, the fact that the, the life of Christ is attested to in religious sources, but, but also in non-religious sources as well. The fact that these apostles went to all the various ends of the earth, most of them to their deaths, for a joke, for a lie, for a, what is it? The endurance of the church throughout the ages, the, the identification of our Lord with the divine logic of the universe, which is why the whole thing makes sense. That would be evidence. Now, who can argue with that? So, yeah, it's true. It's true, Richard Dawkins. If my aunt had cojones, she would be my uncle. But that's why we have to start with correct premises about the very terms that we're discussing. Next one. God's necessary for morality, as you said? Yeah. Okay. World A, a baby is thrown off a building and God exists in that world. Okay. Did something wrong happen? Yeah. Great. World B, a baby's thrown off a building and there's no God in that world. Did something wrong happen? You throw a baby off a cliff, it, it's wrong no matter what. Okay, so God, yeah, so God isn't necessary for morality then? That seems like the quickest debunk of a point I think I've ever had on the show. Are you serious? Man, quit playing with me, man. No, for real, don't play like that. <laughs> there's no world, there's no world in which there are babies if God does not exist. There's no world in which speech is intelligible if God does not exist. There's no world in which there are podcasts that can be understood 
if God does not exist. There is no reason to trust the reliability of our faculties of reason. That's the issue. But the reason it's wrong is because there is a moral order if God does not exist. And the moral order was created by God who does exist, whether the atheists want him to or not. Obviously, that's the issue. 